Mindu madalu ya nyawa nga pitcha nyago jago jana nyayan ka wanga gulil jago madu walja mito. In the mid-1980s, the Western Australian Department of Parks and Wildlife chanced upon a fragile population of black-flanked rock wallabies living at Kelpie, southeast of Pimpie on the Canning Stock Route. Although known to the local Madu people, this population of endangered species was one of the last known populations in the Western Desert. Constantly hunted by feral predators, particularly wild cats and foxes, the rock wallabies were in danger of disappearing altogether. Soon after, the Department of Parks and Wildlife began a project to protect them. As a result, a successful collaboration with the local Mardu community began that has lasted for over 30 years. A local man, Mr. Sampson, was involved right from the very beginning as an acknowledged traditional owner for the area. And our people thought it was important to have this man there because if, if we'd wanted to go on with work in the future, we believed it was really important that the work be understood and supported by the desert people who lived here. Through our uh, relationship with Jigalong community, we had a small amount of funding that we could employ uh, two or three senior men from Jigalong to come out and help us. And they would help us by um, you know, keeping us safe in the country, showing us around the country, and sort of looking after us while we worked here. And this program went on for some time like that, small scale, slowly, slowly building it up. Then um, Kananu Pajokupa started up a ranger team in Jigalong. And this was very exciting for us because we had now the opportunity of not only with the senior men that we had this built this relationship with, but now we had uh, the young men coming through and they're learning from their old people, but they're also learning about the wallabies from us. We did the baiting every year with an aeroplane. And what we noticed was the number of waru here was really high. There were lots of them. And this is when we started to introduce the, the concept of moving the animals back into places on the country where they used to live. Over the next three weeks, some of these wallabies will be relocated to nearby gorges at Jilakuru and Pinpi to establish new colonies of rock wallabies and help secure their survival for the future. We're teaching them for the game regular, we're teaching a lot of people again, but the land of the game will let you put over in it. You know, I don't let you know. You know, raw, but I'm like, he was working through horse western desert area as well. What I'm going to let you, couldn't you let you know, what you allow the day? You know, raw, I'm like. Their elders would have always known that they were Bagujara here. So, and they have, you know, I mean, they're their eyes and ears on the ground and understand so much more than we ever would do about how the population is sort of faring. Uh, one of the risks of having uh, all, or working on a threatened species, often, often they're, once they become a threatened species, they're only found in one or two sites and um, that makes them highly vulnerable to catastrophes like fire or disease. And if we uh, move some across to Jilagaru, um, it'll mean there's uh, at least two sites here uh, where the animals occur and the chances of, of one event, a fire event or a disease wiping out all the animals we've got left is, is a lot more remote. <laughs>
Yang alam juga para range juga macam macam gini. Yeah. Punya tu macam apa? We saving macam apa? Rock kalau apa? Bangun jara. Bangun jara. Kalau jara macam mana kalau yang apa? Kalibenga. Macam mana? Macam apa? Macam kalau jara kalibenga lah. Macam kalau jara rock kalau apa? Macam mana? Punya berapa? Apa lagi? Kilo. Kilo berapa? To be completely honest, without the Māori Rangers, there would be no project at all. It's it's their country. Yeah, without them, the tracking work that we're doing, looking for predators, would just have been not impossible, really. Like, they just have honed in right on the tracking and really picked up on whether the pussycat numbers are going up or down and, you know, whether we need to keep baiting and what we need to do to help look after them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um Saya berfikir, fikir kamu lah, jangan berbudi karo, tinggu, and fox. Nal kau jaga kau jaga, ini apa kau jaga kata? And malah kat dekat ni jangan jangan berpay powering. Powering kau lah, jangan kau track bot. Nada, nala kan? Ah, mai yes tera jangan. And macam kau dah tulis selat tu tu nunggu angka, manku, manku. Kau kamu nak ikut ngapin ni? Wanita guna pelajar puji kat sini, puji kat sini, mana kau ke puji? Nenek nenek, pergi. Yo, karung kalau jawab ini guna puji kat sini kau, puji kat sini, guna karung kan? Kau ni side ke? Kau ni, esok lagi jawab ini guna puji kat sini, kau side, puji nak kau, lo dong, yo. The country in general is in spectacular uh, condition. There's lots of things in flower, which you would expect given there's good rains, but lots of the uh, big grevilleas and things in, in, in splendid bloom. So that's a, that's a great thing, and that'll certainly help the rock wallaby translocation. There should be plenty of food around for them and should help them establish pretty well. So these three weeks is all about um, marking trapping and marking out the bagujara that are around here taking the really healthy ones and taking those ones back to Jilaguru. the two main gorges are probably the best places because there's a lot of water in there a lot of good habitat a lot of good den sites in there and now we've got this fantastic team of really expert people who've done a lot of work on rock wallabies all around australia they've all now come together in this big team um, and we're ready to catch them and move them. So it's, it's actually a really exciting day for all of us. Yeah, I'm going to food get all the way inside. Sip on the And get a bagel on the way and go. Come on, I'm going to get a bagel. 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 I'm going to แล้วก็อะไรกันนะก็เลยนี่ก็อะไรกันก็ไปแท็กแต่ทรัพย์แบบเดิมอะไรนะ Also, I'm going to bring a lot of group bits, two sweets, but I have to go to jail by jail. Okay. Then I'm going to trap them. So we'll, um... Why do you want to like this? Bag. Do you want to like a microchip? Like the next time, I'm going to go to jail. I'm going to go to jail. 
Tahir bola jumaat sama nu. En, kata, kemana? En, gue yang mau. Tu yang, tu yang dulu kau beli. One of the things I was um, really impressed with and, um, um, and really glad that I had an opportunity to see was how the, um, the local Indigenous rangers, the Madu, have um, worked with these animals. Um, it's the first time I've got to experience that and, um, and I must say they were very respectful and they were really fast learners to learn how to, how to collect the animals out of traps and how to process them. Very good, very good. You gotta let him go. Make sure she goes that way. That's it. That's good. That's good. You got a bag? Well, not a lot of them, but a whole lot of them are very good. They are not good. They are not good. Ibu lagi mana buku hari kau lagi, benda buku lagi, mami lah, benda orang je jaga mami. Mana jangan lelak mai kau cipta, cun kau ni leh. Kadai malu lagi next time, next time kadai malu, cip kau orang lelak, naga kau, naga kau orang lelak, nampak lepas kalau pasal orang itu naga, malu nak lagi orang yang, ni ada lagi malu nak. So the chips in and working, so we'll be able to. Every time we catch this animal, we'll know exactly who he is. Certainly the rock wallabies we've been catching here at Kalpi have been in very good condition. We assess that condition on the basis of how fat they are around the tail and measurements are taken of that. But also, just about every female we've captured has got either a, a jelly bean joey or uh, you know, quite a sizeable uh, joey. A whole range of different sizes. And, when conditions are good like this, the rock wallabies will just continuously breed. That's really encouraging as well, that even though we've moved a whole bundle of animals over to uh, the Durba Hills, um, that the ones here at Kalpi will, will very quickly fill that uh, space left behind by those animals going. I think they've got five or six animals that are ready to go today, which is yeah. pretty cool. They'll be going to the new water. Eh? Rock all of us back to Kitagoro. Yeah. <clears throat> it's been many years now, past. Yeah. We're so pleased to take them back there and release them. I think we've got to take about 30 or 40. Yeah. Some of them rock all of us are on the top of now. Yeah. Bagul Jara Jara, you got any Jana Kwari? Not top of it first time, bad way. So it's important to have the helicopter um, available to transfer the animals because if we had to drive it would take us uh, several hours to get there and on these bumpy roads it would stress the animals out. Like uh, after we're happy the animals are here and not, not going missing. Um, I know next time we trap them or the next time we can take the collars off these ones. The bag's open. So. Uh, one of my other roles in the department is I chair the Animal Ethics Committee. And the Animal Ethics Committee uh, is a committee that um, oversees the scientific research that we do in the department to ensure that we treat animals um, with respect. Um, and it's been great to be here to see how this, this team has worked together and, and the way they've treated the animals. It's been really fantastic. So the other day, we came up here and we let, um, um, Along here we let three males go and one female, and around the corner we let five males go and two females, and we're adding more females. We want to bring the group up here to about 20. I don't know what to say, but I'm big. Crying today, I'm so happy. 
even prevalent Bagodara rock wallaby down at Kelby. And it was many years now we bringing this rock wallaby back home. It's good to bring them back home. Nagari Muragari, Nagari Bimbegari. And today we're happy to see this rock wallaby. And I gotta call them flower. Each morning we'll get up and have a listen with a receiver and aerial to see if we can hear those calls beeping and uh, make sure the animals are still where we've put them and haven't run off somewhere completely different and, um, and if they've disappeared somewhere we'll have to track them down and find them and make sure they're still alright. Yesterday we, we just trialled uh, helicopter radio tracking to see where the animals were and most of them seem to have remained very close to their uh, uh, release site and uh, that, that will certainly make it easier to monitor them into the future. I imagine some, particularly the males, will move further afield. I think this project is a fantastic demonstration of collaboration, how all these different groups can come together to do something that's really important for a threatened species. This project's brought together the, the, um, the traditional owners, the, the Mardu people, um, KJ, who have been really important in, in being able to pull it together. Obviously the Department of Parks and Wildlife, um, university researchers, and also um, with the sponsorship from, from mining companies like BHP. Um, it just really does go to demonstrate how we can work together to do something really, really important for a threatened species. You know, I, I see that this might seem like the, the end point of a conservation project, but it's probably really actually just the beginning of something bigger if we want to make it that. I'm, I'm hopeful that this will be a continuing relationship that we have with Maru um, on the country. And uh, I think it's a great example of how we can work together and use our different skills you know, for a really good outcome for the country. <laughs> <laughs>